Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Falling Down by Anne Mercier. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter One, Lucy. Our flight's delayed, which isn't a surprise. Thank God for iPhones and headsets, or I'll have to endure the incessant chatter of Regina Russo. Y yeah, that's my mom. The chatterbox who is now talking my brother's ear off. The difference between Joey and me is he likes to talk as much as my mom. I'd much rather enjoy solitude. <clears throat> Sarah and I are listening to a random playlist on Spotify. She chose the Today's Top Hits playlist, which is okay, but I'm not into a lot of the rap type music, whereas Sarah loves it. Beats out listening to Regina any day. Sarah taps my shoulder and I pull out one earbud out. Stuck in Chicago, of all places. It could be worse. We could be stuck in Kansas. Or Texas. Truth. Let's go get something to drink and see if maybe they have some decent magazines with his sexiness in the gift shop. Sarah snorts. His <laughs> sexiness. What? He is. He's all right. His brother's seriously hot, too. Oh, yeah. Mom, we'll be right back. Uh, don't be too long. I have a feeling we're going to be up in the air soon. Uh, we won't. We head through the concourse of Chicago's O'Hara International Airport. Tons of people are traveling today. I wonder if it's like this every day or if Thursdays are busier than most. Ugh, Sarah says. If I get bumped one more time, I'm going to throat punch someone, I swear. It's so rude. I mean, how hard is it to walk around someone instead of into them? Swap. I say, tucking her to the right so she can walk along the wall. I'm not a fan of being bumped into, but I don't have a hair trigger temper like Sarah. Let me tell you a little about Serafina Manzini. Her mom, Lily, was my dad's sister. She was a Russo. Tommy Manzini married a Russo, which caused some major feuding. Mr. Manzini refused to get involved in his brother's family business. Who could blame him? Who wants to get involved with the freaking Chicago Mafia? Hell, to the no, thank you. Well, his brother didn't take too kindly to being told no, and after multiple threats and multiple fuck yous from Sarah's dad, they killed Sarah's parents execution style. When the hit was carried out, Sarah w was on vacation with us, which is the only reason she's still alive. Now she's protected under my family as our grandpa Giovanni and my uncle Ernesto are, are involved in the family business. We aren't directly involved in any of that crap. My grandpa res respects my dad's decision to go legit and raise us outside the rules of the mafia, which I am thankful for every day. So we will never be 100% outside. That's just not possible. I've seen my cousins Nico and Bella both with guns tucked in the waistband of their pants, and I've been told they can hit moving targets better than some of their most seasoned veterans. Bella can't participate, being a girl and all, but that doesn't stop her from trying. Again, not something I'd want to participate in. This was going to be the life for Sarah had her uncle succeeded. Oh, and just so you know, someone on the Russo Familia took care of those who killed Sarah's family. I shouldn't be happy about that as revenge doesn't solve anything, but now those thugs won't be able to do that to anyone else. Now, you're probably wondering what that has to do with Sarah's temper. Well... Before her family was killed, Sarah was bubbly and fun. She was always positive, but with the loss of her family, she'd become bitter, angry, and at times hostile. She just has no patience for anyone's bullshit anymore. Her words, not mine. So you can imagine after she's been bumped into five or six times how she'd react. It wouldn't be pretty. It ranged from yelling and swearing to possibly punching someone in the face and, as she mentioned, throat punching someone. Well, let's just say it would have been ugly. Oh, Starbucks. Hell yeah, Sarah says, following behind me. What do you want? My treat. Caramel macchiato, venti, triple shot. I raise my eyebrows. You're going to be hyped on the plane. All the better for playing Candy Crush. Oh my God, you and that stupid game. She flips her long brown hair over her shoulder. Whatever, you only think it's dumb because you can't get past level 96. I suck it. If you had something to suck, she breaks off with a shrug and a smirk as we step up to the counter to order. I order Sarah's large cup of caffeine, and for myself, I order an Americano with vanilla syrup, extra sweet with two creams. 
As we wait for our order, there's a com commotion in the center seating area near the flight boards. Huh. I wonder which celeb is flying today, Sarah questions. I shrug. It's not uncommon to see celebrities pass through Chicago. I've just never seen one up close and personal. Maybe it's somewhat sexy like Ryan Reynolds. She wiggles her eyebrows at this, and I can't help but smirk. Doubtful. It's probably some old dude or a model. I start to ramble as I hand Sarah her coffee and pay. I head off to the side to stir in extra sugars and creamer. Maybe it's Miley or the Beebs, I say with a snort. Sarah taps my arm a couple times. What? I look over at her. She's standing there with her coffee halfway to her mouth, her mouth hanging open and her eyes wide. What's going on? L -l -l Look, she points. I turn and I nearly drop my coffee. All the air in my lungs has been sucked out in some sort of vacuum and I can't breathe. I grab Sarah's arm and make some incoherent sound that sounds like, ugh. She must get what I'm saying because she responds with, I know. Ugh. I know. How did you conjure him up looking for his sexiness? You should go ask for his autograph. No way. Uh-uh. I, Luci Luciana Russo, am a chicken. I can't even move at this point. Hell, I can't even speak. I'm sure he wouldn't understand. Ugh. You have to, Lucy. You've wanted to meet Jesse Kingston since we were in seventh grade. This is your one and probably only shot. She's right, but I can't move. I don't even have a pen. I must be talking normally now because she thrusts a pen and paper in my face. Then she grabs my arm and drags me to where he's standing. Ugh. Guess not. She just knows. Okay, you're probably wondering who the hell Jesse Kingston is and what the big deal is. Uh, let me tell you. Jesse Kingston is People's, People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive the last three years running. He's tall, dark, and delicious. He's sex on a stick. He's the lead singer of Falling Down and has the sexiest voice I've ever heard. I kid you not, his voice is deep and gravelly and sends chills down my spine, goosebumps all over my body, and moisture between my thighs. Oh yeah, that's Jesse Kingston. I wipe around my mouth, checking for any signs of dro drool. Oh. God, my heart is going 11 billion miles an hour. I've got tummy flips going on and my girly parts are tingling. All this because he's within 20 feet of me. If he touches me, I'll likely spontaneously combust. Jesse, Sarah calls out. Ugh. She tugs me along behind her as she walks over to him when he stops. Oh my God. Ladies, how are you today? Oh, that smile. Uh, good, we're good, Sarah says as she smacks my arm. I give some semblance of a smile, which I'm sure looks hideous. I'm such an idiot. His mouth kicks up into a grin. Dimples. My gaze zeroes in on his piercings. He's got a hoop in his eyebrow and another through his bottom lip. Could he be any sexier? I yes, yes, he could. How, you might wonder. Well, he's wearing a tight black Chevelle t-shirt and worn faded and ripped jeans along with a pair of scruffed black boots hot. Both of his arms are full of tattoos that I wish I could focus on. Maybe trace with my tongue, but, but well, ugh. and I'm not so sure my tongue on his body would be welcome at this point. Sarah rolls her eyes at me. You're traveling alone? He nods. The band is in LA. She pouts. I know she was hoping to see Falling Down's lead guitarist and Jesse's brother, Ben Kingston. Sarah started crushing on him in 10th grade when they came out with their third album, that was a bit harder than their previous ones. Her favorite song to date is My Fantasy, which was the title song off of that album and spent 37 weeks at the top of the charts. My friend Lucy would like to get your autograph. I stand there frozen. Is that so, Lucy? Still frozen, I refuse to try to speak. I don't want to, uh, in front of him. This is embarrassing enough. He reaches out to take the pen and paper from my hand, and as he leans forward, he whispers, It's okay, Lucy. I won't bite. Well, unless you want me to, of course. He flashes those straight white teeth and winks. Whiskey-colored eyes dance with humor, and I sigh on the inside because I seriously can't snap out of this whatever it is. He signs the paper, taking his time. He caps the pen and places it in the pen and paper in my hand, closing my hand around the items so I don't drop them. He doesn't let go of my hand and my eyes zoom in on that. 
holy hell, Jesse Kingston is holding my hand. It was just for a few seconds, but he held my hand. His fingers are slightly calloused, no doubt from playing guitar. And wow, am I starting to sweat? Are, are you going to be all right, Lucy? Um, hey, it's better than, uh, Sarah sighs in exasperation. Sh she'll be fine. She just had the biggest crush on you forever. I register what she said and vow that as soon as I can move, I'm going to kick her ass. And here it comes, the blush. It creeps up my neck to my face. I'm sure I'm lovely shade of red right now, and red is, oh, not my color. Really? Oh, yeah, she's been following your career since he went national your junior year in high school. Wow, he says with a smile on me. That's a long time. Yeah, it is. She ran around screaming when your first album debuted, and when your video came out, she threw a party. That's dedication. He's still smiling. I stare at those amazing lips. I want to lick them, nibble on them, and tug on that lip ring a bit with my teeth. I manage to blink. Hey, I think she's coming out of it, he says. I shake my head. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. He flashes those pearly whites again and those dimples. No worries. I'm Lucy. Nice to meet you, Lucy, he says, that callous thumb caressing my hand as he shakes it. Sparks zinging up my arm, more moisture pooling at the apex of my thighs. I am a hormonal teenager, and let me tell you, this man makes them rage. He reaches out and tucks a strand of my brown hair behind my ear, and I don't think my heart can take it. Nice to meet you, too. I thrust the pen and autograph towards Sarah, who takes them. Let's walk and talk. I think my flight might be ready. No private plane today? Ha! Look at me talking normal. Nah, not for just me and the big guys, he says, pointing to his bodyguards. When the band travels, then we take the jet. I nod. God, to have a private jet. Better yet, to be on their private jet when they're all on board. Heaven. So you're a fan? Mm-hmm. We're walking super close. So close our arms are touching as we walk. When our hands brush against one another, he winks at me. Winks. He's seriously tall. I mean, I know from his bio and from going to the concerts, he's 6'3", but compared to my 5'3", he's a giant. His shoulders are broad, and I swear I can see his muscles ripple in his stomach as he walks. Another place I'd like to lick. Is it hot in here? I look at Sarah out of the corner of my eye. She's grinning, and she fans herself. Definitely hot in here. Like the bodyguards trailing behind us aren't going to tell him she did that. I just bite my bottom lip, then grin wide. Where are you headed? He asks. L.A. I'm headed back there myself. Oh, were you at Comic-Con? Jesse's involved with a company that makes comics. One's based on rockers, of course. He heads to as many Comic-Cons as he can. I know this because I stop, um, follow him online. I, I would never stalk him. Uh, okay, I do follow him closely sometimes. I sigh. All right, all right. I follow him closely all the time. I even got Google alert. That doesn't make me a stalker. It just makes me a diehard fan. That's all. I'm sticking with that. So shush. Good guess. I was. There was a great turnout. It's part of what I love about the Midwest. People have passion and they're not afraid to go to the extra mile to show their dedication. Mm hmm Was all I could manage. Excuse me while I check in. He squeezes my shoulder gently, then walks up to the counter, the same counter we checked in at and the airline chick all but puddles at his feet. Who can blame her? With his wavy dark hair that touches his collar and those whiskey-colored eyes that ha had me captivated, Jesse Kingston is a walking, talking bundle of testosterone, a woman's equivalent to a man's walking wet dream. Do you think he's on our flight? I whispered to Sarah. It looks like it. Holy shit, Jesse Kingston! I think I just fangirled all over myself. Sarah laughs can't believe this is happening. This has got to be a dream. Sarah pinches me hard. Ow, what the fuck? Not a dream, just proving it to you. You're so violent, I say, rubbing my arm. She shrugs and snaps more photos of Jesse. I didn't notice before, but I think she's been snapping away since she first saw him. I need her to send me those photos. Every single one. I don't care if it's of the back of his head. Oh, here he comes. His gaze zeroes in on mine, and I can't help the smile that pulls across my face. Oh, he is seriously beautiful. 
Looks like the flight will be ready in a few minutes, he says as he stands in front of me. Can I get a picture with you? He smiles. Of course. I hand Sarah my phone as Jesse leans, leads me over to a less crowded area. He puts his arm around me and, oh my God, does he smell good. Like the ocean and sandalwood and yum. He pulls me closer to him and I wrap my arm around his waist. Oh my, even his side is hard and muscular. Damn. I rest my head against his chest. I'm sure I've got some goofy smile on my face, but I honestly don't care. Hold on, he asks Sarah. No, keep holding me close. Yep. Yeah. Turns to face me and there's about an inch of space separating our bodies. Oh, this works. Though I'm tempted to take th that baby step and press myself up against his hard body, maybe even do a little rubbing. They call for boarding and I can't look away. I'm mesmerized by his gaze, those amazing golden eyes with tiny flecks of green and brown. No, don't go. Please don't go. Or if you do, take me with you. He doesn't look away until one of the big guys clears his throat, signaling it's time to go. Lucy, it was really great to meet you. I want to shout that he can't leave me, howl at the moon or flop down at his feet and beg him to never leave me. I, I can honestly see myself wrapping my arms around his leg and, have and him having to drag me along behind him. He's holding my hands, both of them and both of his, and I really, really don't want to let go. Thank you. And thanks for the autograph and photos. He brings my hands to his lips and kisses them. My breath stalls in my chest. Honestly, it was my pleasure. He tilts his head to the side just a bit as if he's trying to figure something out. Have we? He pauses, then shakes his head. Then he smiles that panty-melting smile. He runs his knuckles gently down the side of my face, and with that, he's gone. I feel like I'm going to cry. How stupid is that? I mean, he's Jesse Kingston, and he was just being sweet to a fan. I get it. I know it, but the sting of tears won't stop. Sarah knows, and she pulls me into a hug. God, loose. I nod and sniffle, blinking back ridiculous tears. Girls, we need to board, my mom calls. Dude, was that Jesse Kingston? Joey asks. I nod. I bet Lucy needs a change of panties. Even though he's totally right, I reach over and punch him in the arm. Pig. Joseph Anthony Russo, you will watch your tongue. Sarah hands me the autograph and pen. I look at her. Did that really just happen? She nods. And you have proof. She hands me my phone and there's a picture of me and Jesse. My breath catches. We're staring into one another's eyes as he caresses my face. Oh my God, Sarah! This time, there's no holding back the tears. I know, she says, and throws an arm over my shoulders as we board the plane, pulling me in for a half hug. The electricity was zapping around you two. I thought we were going to be electrocuted. I sigh. Sarah looks around to see if she can spot Jesse. He's likely in first class. Yeah, probably, she says, taking her seat. I sit next to her and look out the window. Can't believe this. In two days, I audition for a major starring role in a movie that would make my career if I land the part. I'm moving to Los Angeles, and I met Jesse Kingston, touched him, and he kissed my hand, a hand that's still tingling from his lips. We should have let Mom upgrade us. Do you think we can sneak up to first class? Sarah asks. I smile softly. As much as I'd love that, I'm not a stalker, and I don't want him to think I am. I'm going to hold on to what he's giving me today and keep it close. See? I'm not a stalker. She nods. I can see that. Maybe one day. Maybe. We sit in silence for a minute as the flight attendant tells us about the emergency exits. My mind blank as if it can't comprehend anything around me. The jet engines fire up and we're lifted off the ground. You going to send me those pics? Sarah smiles. Already done, darling. Already done. <sighs> Perfect. I got an amazing picture of his ass. Only one? She gives me a look of exasperation. Please, try twelve. Twelve? Why twelve? She grins. A dozen hot buns. I laugh. My sister totally rocks. <laughs>